What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and continue learning about why Brits look down on Americans. Part two. If you haven't seen part one, feel free to go check that out or stay here in part two. That's perfectly fine as well. But in part one, I started learning about how British people really feel about Americans. And it's been pretty eye-opening, actually, to say the least. Um, so today I'm curious about what we're gonna hear here in part two. We're gonna listen to some more interviews with British people and get their thoughts and opinions on this, because this actually means quite a lot to me as an American. Why do British people look down on Americans? Is this true? And if so, why? So, with that being said, let's take a look. I mean, I've got wonderful American friends who I adore. Oh. So that question for me is a difficult oh, one because I think they're great, they're fantastic. Hey, I okay. Think the differences in the way our language is, <laughs> in the way we use different. I, I, gotta, I gotta pause it real quick. Hey, okay, that's a way to start the video. Okay, in part one. Um, to say the least, there were some <laughs> criticisms. There was some feedback about the American culture, about how Americans, how we uh, present ourselves and some of the, I don't know, annoying things that we tend to do without even realizing it, I think. And there was a lot of valid criticism in part one. So I'm actually quite excited here <laughs> at the beginning of part two. Uh, finally, someone's like, hey, I, I have American friends. They're pretty cool. Like, okay, that's nice to hear. Let's keep going. <laughs> I don't know if this is going to hold up for long. Words, that's where there's a difference. So but pretty minor. Yeah. Do you think that sometimes some of the British media or, or the portion of the British population that looks down on Americans, is it a way to deflect some of the issues that exist here? Well, Could you, that be said of all societies? Yeah, you can say that of all societies, but you huh. can also say that about the media. They're always distracting, aren't they, from topics, whatever it is. Oh, that's a real, really interesting take. Um, yeah, in part one, they were presenting this idea that because America and Britain are similar in a lot of ways, we have kind of this sibling relationship and we, and we like to tease each other and maybe that explains why Brits might look down on Americans because it's like we're similar but we're, we're kind of seen as the, the worser version in a way or like that annoying younger brother or something. That was one theory they had. This is another that... British media is uh, looking down on Americans to deflect the problems that are happening at home in Britain. Is that, does that sound at all correct? Um, <laughs> I, I don't know. That's, that's kind of weird to me. Uh, I also think there's just a lot of valid criticisms in the sense that British people were saying Americans like think that we're the center of the universe and that America is the biggest and greatest thing ever. And that is annoying. And that I totally understand. And there's definitely truth to it. But these are some interesting like theories they're coming up with um, for legitimate reasons why Brits like probably would look down on Americans. Like I'm starting to understand. America's seen as very alpha male, if you think about it in terms of masculine and feminine. Yeah. There's an okay. alpha maleness to Americans. Uh, and it's maybe it's just the way they speak, the accent, but you don't really have that sense of Britain. I think there's a mm. stereotype of the repressed male, that soft spoken. Considering we're huh. like right on the edge of Europe, we have more in common with America right. in many ways than we do with the rest of Europe, right. which in theory yeah. is where we should be more aligned. And I think there's sort of something that can feel sort of slightly um, odd about that, you know, like with the whole Brexit thing, breaking away more from where we're most closely connected to and sort of being in a situation where, you know, we're going to end up with chlorinated chicken instead. Mm. <laughs> what? 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 I, I don't know anything about the chickens. This is really fascinating to me because now we're starting to get into like aspects of British culture and British policies that I don't really understand. I don't ever hear about. Um, this is very interesting. Uh, he was kind of touching on how Americans are really like alpha male, like 
overconfident, loud, like half are opinionated on everything. And if if that's not enough, we probably think our opinions are like like more valuable than others. And that's not good. I, I do understand like uh, looking down on that point of view because I, I think as an American, I think that's a bad quality that a lot of us have. Yeah. There's this tendency to think of Americans as just, you know, they're simplistic, really. Are you, oh. like, oh. annoyed by the Americans here? <laughs> Simpli- <laughs> oh, the British have a way with words. Not, we're not stupid. We're not idiots. We're, we're simple. We're very simple. <laughs> oh. You know, they're simplistic, really. Oh. Are you, like, annoyed by the Americans here? In, uh, Sometimes. I wouldn't say. Depends how they are. Americans. Now, right. the interesting thing is right. I love to drag the U.S. through the mud and criticize it for all the things that I think it deserves criticism for. But the second sure. the Brits start criticizing me or the U.S., you have nothing to say. Kind of like I can criticize where I grew up, but you aren't allowed to. And the British, <laughs> in my opinion, are doing their version of the same thing, criticizing themselves to no end. But no one wants an outside opinion. Maybe we all do this. I think we <laughs> that's, all- that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> no, I mean, I understand what he's saying. It's okay to criticize yourself, uh, but that doesn't mean you want others criticizing you. I don't necessarily subscribe to that philosophy. Like, I think it's fine. As long as the opinions here are, like, well thought out and, you know, thoughtfully presented. And that's generally what's happened so far in this video is I think people have actually been very, very respectful the Brits here have been very respectful in tearing down <laughs> Americans and explaining exactly why we are looked down upon. Um, I don't I don't feel like offended or anything because there's a lot of truth to, to some of this stuff, actually, that I'm starting to realize. We all do this. It's like pointing at someone else's flooding house when your own house is on fire. So mm. I lived in America for six years. I lived oh. in... California, Alabama, and Oklahoma for three years. Everyone hears my accent yeah. and is like, oh, where in America are you from? I'm like, yeah. well, I'm actually from Australia, but wow. then they give me their little opinions on American stuff. So I've actually had to play defense a couple times since I've been out here. Are <laughs> you serious? Guys. I'm so serious, I'm so serious. They talk about guns, wow. they talk about this, but they don't have like a very good understanding, not just English people, this is people around the world, even in Australia, of the history of America and why those things became what they were. People trying to... Interesting. Very interesting. Uh, this is not what I expected. I was ready to be just punched, torn down today. Um, we're actually seeing like kind of the other side of it a little bit in, in part two here. This is an Australian who lived in America and saw the light, or at least he saw some of the positive aspects of America, or seems like he, he feels like he understands why Americans are the way we are. <laughs> Which, I, I do like that. You, like, in all fairness, you probably should go live somewhere or at least experience that culture before having a super hard stance or opinion on it. Now, not all of us can just travel around the world and, you know, we can take some liberties here with what we say. But uh, <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> not just because <laughs> he's, he's running to the American defense. That's funny. You know, throw rocks in and hide their hands. Yeah. They don't want the blame to be on them, so it's easy to put it on the big superpower that is on all everyone's TV. Uh, My perception is... Ah, uh, that's interesting. Even that little comment is interesting to me. Like, because America, we are, we're like, we are a big country. Like, we have a spot on the global stage, at least. We have a big economy. We have Hollywood. We have stuff. Like, that... that some people think is important so it's like somehow it's easier to look at america as like this big thing and and pick on that uh is is there any truth to that i i actually feel like i understand that it's very difficult for me to bring myself outside of my american bubble my american mindset and picture myself like what if i was born in another country somewhere on the planet a small country, what would I think of the United States from the outside looking at it? I probably would think a lot of this stuff. It, that, that's, that's really interesting to think about, actually. It's, it's tough for me. 
Uh, I don't consider Americans necessarily lesser yeah. in terms of like lifestyle, ah. culture, per se. I oh. just think it's a bit more apparent than it is in the UK, but the UK is just as problematic. There's always sort of a sense in the past that like America was sort of, you know, two decades ahead of what was happening in this right. country. There is a sense that we're getting closer Interesting. in a time yeah. frame. Just... Oh yeah, <laughs> I mean, funny enough, I've done a lot of videos learning about some parts of British culture, and I think in many respects, America is trying to catch up to some of the stuff that's happening in Britain. Um, some of the technology, some of the food, like, oh my, I don't think that's going to change here. I don't even want to go off on this tangent, but the food and the crap that we put in our stuff here is just bad. You don't want to be like that. Ugh. Yeah, anyway... <laughs> Say younger generations tend to be a bit more, and the only word I can think of it is shameful of the heritage. I think it's a lot of things from like colonialization and things like that. Mm -hmm. There tends to be a lot more shame around it. We're a small island. True. Before we get into this next person's interview, um, she is absolutely true in the sense that younger Americans now, like in 2024, like younger people are in America were were much less patriotic than the older generations. Like and I don't know what like maybe we're starting to just be more self-reflective or whatever or we're getting further and further away from the founding of America, but like the overzealous American patriot like nationalism, ah USA, USA. That's definitely toning down or in a sense it's still kind of a thing in our politics funny enough but i think in general like that is toning down with the younger americans i think she's correct actually we're a small island right so we've got a small island mentality but because we've got a small island mentality we've got to overcome it by kind of that impression that we're the best and i think that's changing though i wouldn't say it's necessarily a total reflection of society now. But I think historically it has been, of course. Let's flip the question. Interesting, interesting. She's saying because Britain is small, Brits need to act like, like, uh, bigger to compensate or something. But from what I've seen about, like, British culture and British customs, British people in general are a lot more humble the guy earlier was even saying, like, literally more soft-spoken compared to Americans who are loud and talk like this! <laughs> like, British are just more um, respectful, like, aware, whereas uh, Americans are more selfish, think our opinions matter more. Um, I think a lot. there's a truth to a lot of this kind of stuff. Yeah, interesting. How are Americans perceiving the British? My answer to that is um, there is a power dynamic going on. And for better or for worse, the U.S. is much more of a world superpower right now. So I don't think that the U.S. feels threatened necessarily, like competitive with Great Britain. Because of that, I think there's kind of like a, mm. ah, they're, they're cute, you know what mm. I mean? Like they're, they're, they're Harry Potter and James <laughs> Bond <went>. and right. <laughs> sophisticated and... You know. He's worth, like, awesome. uh, I think he's touching on something here that is important and true. How do Americans feel about British people? Well, the truth is a lot of Americans simply don't think about British people. Don't take any offense to that. Many Americans don't think about any other country in the world. Americans don't think about the world. Americans, we think about America. We think about ourselves. And it's funny for me to even say that out loud and think about that. I think that is so true. And that is a huge difference in our life experience. Like, I think British people and probably people all over the world think about other countries and cultures and the world. And Americans, we are just trapped in our own little bubble. We think about us. Now, now when Americans talk about British people, where it's a lot like he said. It's like... Oh, British people, cool accent, fancy. Um, they have Harry Potter. Like, it's very surface level kind of stuff, actually. 
I think that's a really good point. Interesting to think about. Exactly. <laughs> but I also think that there's also a major degree of ignorance. Like, the, the, the U.S. is so self-involved. Yep. We're not even paying attention to what's going on elsewhere in the world. So yes. there's not even enough of to form an opinion. Yes. You know? Now, this video is exactly. definitely supposed to be in good fun. I harbor no ill will towards the British. I find our rivalries as human beings. Yeah, yeah. Just to be clear, like, <laughs> Americans really like the British. Like, American, most Americans think British culture is really cool and interesting. We don't interact with it very much. But I would say there's, like, almost zero ill will or hostility from Americans towards British. Like, honestly, as far as I'm aware of, you know, I just, I can only speak for myself, but I think I'm, I'm pretty representative of most Americans, honestly. Um, so that's interesting because it, it feels like maybe the British have a negative opinion of Americans, but us Americans have a positive or neutral opinion of the British. But I think the British are more aware of what's going on in America, and Americans don't know what the heck is going on anywhere. So that's a big difference. Across cultures, across nations, to be comical and interesting. It's like an insight into human psychology. And despite all of the, you know, criticizing going on here, I'd like to end on a positive note. Mm. I'd like to express my appreciation for a few things that I think the British do better than Americans. Okay. Your healthcare system, for one. Also, the Premier League. They say mm -hmm. football was... Oh, this is gonna... <laughs> This is going to take a while. Uh, we're listing things that the British do better than America. Definitely the healthcare. Oh my God. Uh, we are so freaking far behind on the healthcare. Don't even get me started on the healthcare. Okay. Um, football as well. Yes, let's, let's get away from the healthcare. That makes me a little depressed. <laughs> invented in England, and if that is true, as someone with Argentinian background, I can only thank you. I also have to thank you for your incredible music. What yes. a contribution to yep. our collective heritage. It is a foreign idea to me to have a royal family, but I respect right. the commitment to tradition. But I did move here um, the week that the Queen died, so it wow. was really interesting to see I think my first impression of like the British as a public was that of like mourning for their queen. Wow, you know, the yeah. 14 hour long line to go see her lying in state. So I think it was a little bit of a shock. This might sound silly, but how procedural the British can be. I noticed that that tends to ha! be like every British. Ha! How procedural the British can be. Is that a very American thing to think or what? Because it's basically saying here in America, we are chaotic. And I do think that's true. Oh my God, compared to British culture, uh, queuing, not even a word here. <laughs> um, I would love American culture to have more of this aspect of British culture. The uh, proceduralness, the orderliness, the respect. Definitely. Oh my God. The person I've met tends to be very procedural, as opposed to Americans, I think, are a little bit more like, dare I say, free-spirited or individualistic. So, I mean, sure, I think there are... Sure, 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 sure. You can... It can be in a positive way. Like, I've heard some British people on videos be like, oh, I admire Americans for being carefree, for, like, being optimistic about stuff. Maybe a little naive, but what? A, it, it, at least happy about the future. Whereas British people can be so analytical and self-reflective that you're almost too aware about the horrors of the world <laughs> i don't know there's pros and cons to each way huh that's not to say that one is better than the other and as a final note we are obviously a world of individuals yeah. and so stereotypes never fully work still i find it's so fascinating to explore the stereotypes and cliches that we have for one another not always but often there is some sort of basis of truth there or else yeah they wouldn't spread and persist as they do. Anyway, having said all of that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please consider wow. liking it. That was, ve that was very good. Uh, this was by Nathaniel Drew. And I got to give him credit and give that video a like. This was a fantastic video. So interesting. Um, and I think a, a huge part of that boils down to that as Americans, we have stereotypes and thoughts about Britain. But we don't often hear about what others think about America. And that was kind of the theme of this entire video, this series, part one and two, 
Um, that's what made it really, really interesting and kind of eye-opening for me is hearing British opinions, how the British view and maybe even stereotype us Americans. I think that's really valuable information, actually, because like he said, within the stereotype of Americans, there's some exaggerations and there's some truth, which is definitely worth thinking about and learning from. There was definitely stuff here that I learned, um, stuff that I wasn't even aware of about uh, American culture. So uh, I, I actually quite enjoyed this quite a bit. Anyway, if you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment with your thoughts on why the British look down on us Americans or just your thoughts on any of these topics here today in general. That'd be very interesting to hear about. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me reacting to Britain and British culture and learning things about Britain for the first time, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching and see you next time.